Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Chemistry and of course today we are going to be looking at or continue our study on chemical energetics here and um, we are looking at the uh, S law, S law and the Born Harbor Circle. All right. So uh, one of the very important benefits you see that you have been gaining from these classes, especially in chemistry, is that uh, the whole of your textbook, okay, you will to be completely covered, okay. And the important things that you need to know, all right, are what we actually were telling you, okay. So uh, a lot of the other things here, you are going to learn them in higher institution. You are definitely going to learn them again. So please. Uh, open your heart to learn, to learn, all right, and do not skip any part of what this video. Watch it to the end so that you gain, fully gain what what you are here for, all right. So now uh, today we are looking at uh, Hess law and the Born Harbor circle. Okay, so now this Hess law is also called the uh, the law law of constant heat summation. The law of constant heat summation, or we call it what. Hess law. Okay, it was uh, proposed by a man called German Hess, German Henry Hess. Okay, and of course, he stated that what that the total entropy change. Talk about the law now. Say that the total entropy change for a reaction is constant. The total entropy change for a reaction is constant, regardless of the route through which would that chemical change occur. Provided the conditions at the start of the reaction, all right, is the same as that at the end or at the final what conditions. Let me write it out as usual so that what you get what the full gist. Okay, the law of constant heat summation, or you can just call it Hess law. Okay, Hess law say that Hess law of constant heat summation states that the total enthalpy change enthalpy change for a reaction okay is constant okay the total enthalpy change for a reaction is constant regardless of the route regardless of the route right which the reaction occurs, all right? Provided, provided the conditions, provided the conditions at the start of the reaction, provided the conditions at the start of the reaction, okay, is the same. As that at the end or final condition. Okay, you will notice that the yeah, air brightened up just now. Okay, there's the, I didn't put up a light. All right, so that is just by the way. You know, I interact with you like say you deal with life. You get like say we deal with life. So I'm um, seeing you, you are not seeing me, okay, you are seeing me through the screen. Um, you are not here with me, but I know that you are going to watch this video, you are going to like it, you are going to subscribe to this channel, you are going to share these videos. Please, that is the only way you can help this channel to grow, all right? So please like, comment, drop a comment. And even simple, something as simple as thank you is okay. It's okay, all right? That encourages us to do more, all right? Thank you. Ah, I learned a lot. You have a question, drop it in the comment section. We reply you. That is the way we interact, all right? So please. Let's go over the law again. Hess law of constant summation says that the total entropy change for a reaction is constant, okay, regardless of the route through which the chemical reaction occurs, provided the conditions at the start of the reaction is the same as that at the end or final condition, okay? What we can relate this to, let's say a man traveling from uh, Nigeria to UK, a man traveling from Nigeria, NIG to UK, Okay, now I don't know if you have if you are watching this video whether you have boarded a flight before or whether you have not. Now, if a man is traveling from Nigeria to UK and he decides to take a direct flight, direct flight fume to UK without stopping anywhere for Nigeria, as it says of Nigeria, 
going to UK direct, okay? And then another, the same man or the same man or another man, for example, decides to take what uh, um, a flight from Nigeria first. Then he goes to Ethiopia, ETH, before he now goes to what UK, okay? What Hess Law is saying is that regardless of what the route, okay, that a man decides to take to UK, if the destination is UK, okay, if the destination is UK, the man is not supposed to spend, the man is supposed to spend the same amount. If he spends 20, let's say $20,000, or let me say 20 Naira, let me use our currency, let me use our currency, our currency get value. Let's say he decides to, the price from Nigeria to UK directly is 20 Naira. If he decides to break this journey from Nigeria, first of all, to Ethiopia, before he goes to UK, okay, it's, the price should still remain what 20 Naira. It should not change. The price should not change. Okay? That is what uh, his law is what explaining. That the total interbit chain for a reaction is constant, regardless of the route. Regardless of the, of the route, the, the, the reaction what takes, provided the conditions at what? At the start of the, uh, the start of the reaction is the same as that at the final or at the end of what of the reaction. You get so irrespective of the route that what this man decides to take to UK, okay, is he going to pay twenty naira? That's why it's supposed to see, it's supposed to what it's supposed to be. All right. Now let me give you. Let us interact a bit. But the truth is that in real life, it's not like that. Now it's not like that. Now, okay. If you are traveling from, I'm telling you now, this is not part of the class, so, <laughs> so that you will know. Okay, that direct flights. Okay, they are more expensive than. This broken or connecting flights. We call these ones connecting flights. I'm telling you about aviation small now. We call these ones connecting what flight. You see, you, you, you get from Nigeria to Ethiopia, you, you stop, and I will spend the night there. The next day, you connect to the UK flight from Ethiopia. All right? That is called connecting flight. Connecting flight. Then this one from Nigeria directly to UK is called a direct flight. Now, the direct flight is usually more expensive than this connecting flight. Okay? And of course, this one has advantages so because let's say you have never been to Ethiopia before. This, this will give you an opportunity to over spend a night in Ethiopia before going to UK. That means you have known another country, right? Which is good for tourism. Okay, like you want to know uh, if they want to not count how many places you have gone to, you add Ethiopia now, definitely, because the embassy there will stamp your passport and so on. Okay, so that's what happens. Okay, why is Nigeria to UK more expensive now than what than you breaking the journey? This one is supposed to be even more. More expensive because you are, you are you are breaking the journey. You spend the night. The flight will even give you want to to give you accommodation to stay. Okay, they will give you meal to eat. This one's supposed to be more expensive. But why is it more expensive? It's because this one is in, is is more in demand. People, there's a lot of people do not have time to waste. They don't want to. Maybe some people will have things to do to move the next day. They cannot be breaking their flights. Now they want to go directly. They do not want any delay. Okay, that is why it's the demand for this one that made the price now what more expensive than this one. But normally under normal condition, these two are supposed to be what the same price, whether we like it or what or not. That is just by the wayside anyway. Now let's continue with our hair law. Okay, so we could also say that what our hair law uh, say that the total entropy change for a reaction is equal to the sum of entropy changes of individual steps in the reaction, okay? That the total entropy change for a reaction is equal, the total entropy change for a reaction is equal to the sum of entropy changes, that the total, the total entropy change for a reaction is equal, is equal, so the sum of enthalpy changes of individual steps of individual steps in the reaction. Okay, so we could say that what well, that Hess law says that what well, the total enthalpy change for a reaction is equal to the sum of enthalpy changes of individual steps in the what in the reaction so irrespective of what of the roots okay the total entropy change is the sum of what of the individual steps okay in the reaction let us see an example for example if you have for example sulfur in the solid state reacting with oxygen o2 to give you so2 that is sulfur four oxide okay this one is what this is gaseous state this is what gaseous state and let's say uh, the, the entropy for this reaction, delta H, is minus 297, for example, kilojoule. All right? And then this SO2 now reacts with more oxygen to give you us, let's say, SO3. Okay, and S, 
again solid. Sorry, no, not air solid. SO2 now. SO2 reacts with what? With more oxygen. So give us what now? SO3. This is in gaseous state. This is in gaseous state. We have to watch, check if our reaction is still balanced. Okay. This one is balanced. Right? One sulfur, one sulfur. It's balanced. Two oxygen, two oxygen. That one is balanced. Okay. Is this one balanced? Yeah, we have one sulfur. Yeah, we have one sulfur. So for sulfur is balanced. Yeah, we have how many oxygen here? Two here, two here, four oxygen here. How many here? You can see that what there are what? How many oxygen here? There are three oxygen here. So three oxygen atoms here. So this one is four. This one is three. We have to balance the word the reaction. Okay. And of course, we are concerned with what one molecule. All right. So we have to balance from this uh, reactant side. If you add one over two here, okay. If you add one over two here, you see that what this one now become one oxygen atom. You get me? This one is two before. It's just like saying one over two times two. Okay, to cancel. We now have what one oxygen atom. Okay. So here we have one oxygen atom. Yeah. And then here we have two oxygen. So two plus one is three. And then here is three. So this one becomes what balance. Now, what we want to get is SO3 from sulfur. We want to get sulfur, uh, want to get sulfur trioxide from what? From sulfur. Okay, so now what do we do? That means that what the we have gotten sulfur trioxide now. That means that SO3, all right, SO3 was formed, okay, from what? From sulfur and what? And oxygen, okay. So now let us now bring out the reaction together, okay, to give us what forms this SO3, all right. So we can say what that sulfur plus what? Sulfur plus what gives us this SO3? Sulfur plus what? O2 here. How many molecules of oxygen is here? One molecule of oxygen. Then there's half a molecule of oxygen here too. Then plus what? One over two. So that will give us three over two. All right. That means sulfur plus what? Three over two O2. This is gas. This is what? Solid. Okay. It's what gives us what? SO3 what? Gas. Okay. Now, that means that the total entropy change for the reaction. Okay, sorry, I didn't list here. If here, if the entropy change here is what minus 99 kilojoule, okay, that means that we cannot find what the total we can find the entropy change for what for what for this reaction in the formation of what SO3 from what sulfur and oxygen. Okay, look at the route it took. We first of all form SO2, then from SO2 we now form SO3. Okay, but directly this is what this is what this is what we should we should have gotten. Okay, this is what this, this is just the single reaction that represented these two reactions. Okay, so now to get the entropy change for this one, it will no longer be difficult. Okay, from Hess law is saying that what well, that delta H, delta H is cause of sum of what. Let's say this one is delta H one, this one is delta H two. The sum of what delta H one, then plus what delta what H or two. All right, that's what Hess law is saying. Okay, so now to do that now delta H. We'll be close to what now? Into bracket minus 297, then plus minus 99. Okay? All right? This will be our what our value. Hope you can see clearly. Minus 297 plus minus, you can, it's supposed to be plus. Okay? It's plus here, but here is what is minus. So plus times minus is minus. It will open that. So I want to add that delta H is equal to minus 297 minus what? 99. If you do that, delta H now will be close to what? I think minus 396 kilojoule. All right? So that will be our final word answer. So, Hess law is saying that the total entropy change for a reaction is equal to the sum of entropy changes of the individual steps in the world in the reaction. Okay? Now, we can represent um, Hess law with what? With the bond harbor word circle. Okay, we may represent what has law with bond Haber circle. The bond Haber circle, right, is a combination of both the energy profile and energy circles. Okay, it's a combination of what? Both the energy profile and the what? And the energy was circle. Signifying that what? That no matter the multiple stages, no matter the multiple stages involved in the what? In the formation of a compound, okay, or in the reaction, all right? The... Total entropy change to what is constant. He's trying to explain what uh, Hess's law, and he's still trying to tell us that what that uh, uh, the uh, total entropy change for a reaction is what is completely what constant, irrespective of the route. Okay, irrespective of the multiple stages involved in a reaction. Okay, the total entropy change is what is constant, and is the summation of what of the individual individual what summation of what of the individual what stages. In the what in the reaction, okay. Now, uh, bond Haber circle is very, very. It, it was it was uh, developed by uh, two German scientists. German scientists, Karl Max Born 
and freezed freeze harbor okay and this uh and uh, uh it was developed by what by max born max born and what and freeze harbor that's how we call it what born harbor born harbor what uh circle okay free hair law and the born harbor circle developed by max born and freeze harbor okay what this help us to do is to estimate and understand Okay, the, to estimate and understand the what the lattice what energy of what of a ionic solids. Okay, it says how to what to estimate, estimate and understand the lattice energies of a ionic solids. Okay, this is what this um, Bonhaba circle is supposed to understand. Okay, it's supposed to, to understand and estimate the lattice energies of what of a ionic what solids. Okay, so that is all about the Hess law and the Bonhaba circle. I'm sorry I've not talked about the old school jam, but please go and get the application for for your jam CBT exam. You need what a good jam CBT app like the O3D School Jam app. Okay, so go to Play Store right now, download the application. Okay, install it on your phone. Start practicing a lot of questions. If you want to fail, jam and don't don't practice questions. If you want to fail, if you want to fail, let's say you so much desire that I uh, I want to fail. Okay, don't practice questions. But if you want to succeed in jam, practice questions, study questions, answer questions, fight with questions. Okay, kick questions, destroy questions, build confidence. Okay, you see that you will go to the hall and you come out successfully. So download the app, like this video, subscribe, and keep sharing. And I'll see you in the next episode. All right, thank you for watching.